Well, bam! It's me again. Hello, I'm Deep in the Reeds, and what read am I deep into today? Why, it's Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer. Uh, Geoffrey Chaucer is considered one of the most influential writers in the English language. He's often brought up alongside William Shakespeare or John Milton, although Chaucer was writing way before either of those guys. He, he was active in the late 1300s, and he's mostly known for his epic poems like Troilus and Crusade, The House of Fame, and of course his most notable work uh, is The Canterbury Tales. The Canterbury Tales is about a group of 29 pilgrims who are on their way from London to Canterbury Cathedral, where they intend to worship at the altar of St. Thomas Becket. And while they're on their way, they decide to tell each other stories to pass the time. And the person who can tell the best story will have their food and drink paid for when they return to the inn in London. So it's basically a series of short stories set within the framing device of a road trip. Whenever I read a story that's like hundreds or thousands of years old, I am always a little apprehensive going in because I know that there's usually going to be sort of a veil of time over the whole thing that makes it feel sort of remote and static. But Canterbury Tales has a lot of ways of sort of piercing through that veil and feeling really modern and really accessible. I was surprised at how just easy it was to sink into this story and really get a lot out of it. The only roadblock I really had was the fact that almost the entire thing is written in rhyming couplets, which means you have to be paying attention to things like cadence and rhythm as you read, which is not something a reader is normally expected to think about. But once you get into the flow and the pacing of everything and the very playful writing of Chaucer, uh, you, you fall into place and it's so much fun. Like uh, Another thing that pierces that veil of time is the humor. It's really, really funny, even though it's so old. The Miller's Tale is hilarious, and I love some of the interactions between the partner and the rest of the group. And that's another thing that makes it really sort of timeless and easy to read, is the fact that these aren't just isolated short stories that you're being told. They feel very grounded in the personalities that are telling them. You get different insights into various subjects. They kind of serve as debates between each other, like they'll get on to the subject of love and marriage, and so you'll have a series of stories that all have sort of different perspectives on that. The interactions between the pilgrims is great as well, like the miller gets drunk and he tells a story that's very raunchy and doesn't really have a moral, and then one of the other pilgrims gets offended and tells a story about how all millers are stupid and yeah, so then you have the friar and the, the um, summoner who get into an argument with each other, and it's basically a medieval equivalent of a rap battle, and the stories they tell are insulting one another. Sometimes you'll notice a steep dip in quality of the writing, and you're like, what is this? Why is this? Can we get to the end of this story, please? And then the another pilgrim will interrupt the person and be like, this story sucks, can we please move on to something else? And everyone's like, yeah, this guy sucks at telling stories. And then you realize that Chaucer's been basically fucking with you for the past few pages. However, I don't want to give the impression that the Canterbury Tales is all humor and all jokes. Every story has a different tone and a different perspective. So you get sort of a wide range of subject matter and things like that that are very relatable to readers today. But then at other points, you get very stark reminders of the fact that this is a medieval story. Like, the Prioress's tale is super xenophobic, and it's very fear-mongery about groups that aren't Christian. And, you know, a miracle happens in the Prioress's tale, which is framed as a positive thing within the context of this. But to a modern reader, it's like something straight out of a horror story, you're like, oh my god, this is terrifying! But most of most of the stories in this are morality tales, and they're religious too, like, um, they're all going on their way to a cathedral, so it makes sense. Most of the stories revolve around one of the seven deadly sins, and sort of warn you against, like, straying from the path of righteousness. So, yeah, a lot of them are dark, but they all have this moral to them that makes them sort of similar to um, what you would find in Grimm's fairy tales, for example. There were some spots in this book where the preaching and the morality got a little bit too much. Uh, the monk and the priest both tell stories one after the other, 
and both of those stories are very repetitive and very heavy-handed where they're trying to get across one message and they just hammer you over the head with anecdotes and anecdotes to expound on the single point they're trying to make. And that was probably Chaucer trying to comment on the Bible thumpers of his day instead of poke at them, but uh, it doesn't change the fact that it was pretty tough to get through those sections. You even had some of the pilgrims complaining, like, they were looking at the two preachers and they're just like, stop preaching! <laughs> but, you know, it, it's a collection of short stories, so there's going to be some gems and there's going to be some not-so-gems. But even the parts that are a little bit slower are still worth reading, they're not, like, terrible by any means, they're just, they take a little bit more patience to get full experience out of, I guess. And the other thing to mention is that this is a modern translation, and it might be that uh, the original text is a little bit better at getting those parts across. So maybe at some point I'll pick up Middle English, I hear it's not that difficult, and then I'll go back and read the original text. I'd love to do it, frankly, because this reading experience has gotten me pretty interested in Chaucer and medieval writing in general, so maybe I'll come back and try uh, Troilus and Crusade at some point as well. Despite the fact that the Canterbury Tales was far from complete by the time Chaucer died, it still ends with this very satisfactory conclusion where it leaves you thinking about who you are as a person and whether or not you hold true to your virtues. And it has this very melancholy, somber sort of imagery that ties that theme together. And because of that, it makes it worth reading from beginning to end. If you're looking to dip your toes into medieval writing, I think this is a great place to do it, because you don't have to read the whole thing if you don't want to. If you're looking to, for some quick humor, read The Miller's Tale, or if you're looking for some of the dark beliefs that medieval people used to hold, uh, look into the Prioress's Tale, or hell, even the prologue is really entertaining by itself. It's also a great introduction to not only medieval writing, but medieval culture. You get a lot of insights into how people thought and the sort of professions that used to exist but don't anymore. Uh, but yeah, no, this was really satisfactory. There were some challenges. It took me a little while to get used to the rhyme schemes. But overall, this is a 7.5 out of 10 for me, and I bet you it would be higher. A after a few years, if I come back to it, my rating's probably going to go up. But yeah, for now, 7.5 out of 10 feels right. And uh, yeah, that's, that's about it for me this time. Uh, thank you for coming by and listening to me ramble about books again. Hope you are, are sticking around for the next video. Maybe subscribe. I don't know. It's up to you. Um, but yeah. See you later. Bye.